Hello, Modern here. In today's video, I want to show you my ultimate snapper build guide for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader that utilizes a lengthy buff routine, making MMO players jealous along the way. This build focuses on taking out faraway targets with immense firepower while being supported by an officer or strategist to make every shot hit very hard. The Operative and Bounty Hunter are dead classes of choice for this one, offering you a multitude of buffs and benefits for standing behind cover and lining up the perfect shot. With the right setup you won't be needing a bolter to shoot 8 times in a single round. You can do it just fine with a sniper rifle. Now positioning is key with this archetype. Nearly all guns in the game have limited range and fall off in terms of hit chance rapidly once you get past an optimal range. A sniper rifle with 18 range does not have this problem. You can position yourself in a sniper's nest behind a cover and become virtually untouchable due to maxed out dodge. You however have the perfect sight on the whole battlefield. Now you might wonder how does an officer and strategist come into play here. The strategist can use officer abilities in a field of your choice. You can set up a rear battlefield underneath a sniper and still buff him with all your stuff despite not being near him. This improves his hit chance, damage and gives him extra turns if the need arises. The officer's ultimate ability also restores action points per enemy killed. Given we are only ever using one action point per shot, we have around 10 extra shots we can distribute between players. We are the dealer of death. With that in mind, let's go over the build. Your most important stat is going to the ballistic skill followed by perception, intelligence and agility. Any hit chance beyond 100 is converted to crit chance, basically guaranteeing critical hits on most enemies. Perception increases our damage through other means, like abilities, and reduces the dot chance of enemies making them easier to hit and agility boosts our own dot chance, which makes us nearly invulnerable to damage. But why intelligence? On character creation we want to attain 40 intelligence for a plus 4 bonus, which gets converted to 2 additional exploit stacks whenever we apply them with analyze enemies. Each exploit increases the damage we deal to enemies by a considerable amount, acting as an additional multiplier. Once we get into the second and third class you will want to further concentrate on ballistic skill, followed by perception and finally agility to boost our dot chance. As for the skills, go for awareness and tech use. Other operators should pick up logic instead. For the home world we are going to pick up imperial, with humanity's finest. For humanity's finest we are going to pick up agility. And for the origin we are going to pick up the Astra Militarum Commander. This will give us access to regiment tactics, which in turn provide us with a considerable amount of additional damage. However, we can only use this one once per combat. Now before we move on to the operative, let's go over the supportive class you want to have with this specific sniper archetype. Now the officer gets a few abilities that are exceptionally strong, one of which is voice of command, increasing our characteristics by a huge amount. We also get bring it down to provide us with another shot per turn. We can use finest hour to provide us with even more turns to shoot. This combined with the fourth upgrade of finest hour gives us around 12 additional shots. We can use take aim to ignore cover, which is really good to hit high priority targets. And we can use move 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 to move our sniper without using their movement during their turn. With the grand strategist we get three zones. The rear one is the one we want to position underneath our sniper. We can further boost this one with combat locus stratagem, doubling the area bonus of the rear area. Now going back to our sniper, we are going to look at the operative with analyze enemies. Each stack of exploit will provide us with a more multiplier damage based on our perception and the amount of stacks we have on the target. We can actually use analyze enemies for one AP, which applies one plus the int bonus divided by two as additional exploit stacks on the enemy. Since we have 50 intelligence right now and we start with a huge bonus to intelligence like 40, so we get a plus 4 bonus here, we apply 3 additional exploit stacks on one target. Then we pick up logic or tech, we get exposed weakness for free, however we don't want to actually use exposed weakness, it's one of the worst applications for our exploits. Then we pick up dismantling attack, a guaranteed shot on a priority target. It's really good if you want to take out one target at a time. However, you should actually use the momentum on your officer to apply the additional turns via finest hour. It's much better. Then we pick up sharpshooter. So for every five cells between us and our target, we get ballistic skill and damage. Then we pick up ballistic skill 
training, ballistic skill, tide of excellence for every exploit we remove. So if we kill a target, we remove them. If we hit a target, we remove them. We get a stacking damage buff and armor penetration that doesn't run off. So this one is until the end of combat. Then we pick up ballistic skill. So if we move, then we use this ability. This ability stays in our target. So it's a one time use for basically the whole combat. We get cover efficiency. We get perception bonus. We get ballistic skill bonus for basically free. Then we pick up logic or tech use. Then sniper expertise. The further away a target is, the more armor penetration we have. Then we pick up nimble for a bonus to dot chance. We upgrade dismantling attack with the second upgrade. Then we pick up awareness. Then again, awareness, not law imperium. That was a mistake here. Then perception, then fresh target, because we are most likely always going to hit a target that is not cracked. So we deal more damage with our first shot. Then pick up awareness or logic or tech use. Then precise attack. This will buff our precision even more based on the expert stacks and our perception bonus on the target. Then stronger together. So every single ally we currently have in our party gets a plus five to agility. Then we pick up ballistic calculation. Far away targets get dealt even more damage. Then perception, intelligence, again intelligence characteristic training and dismantling attack free. Our upgrade is going to be the bounty hunter. We want to apply prey before we attack a target and one shot it so we get the boni. Then we get cal the bolt which is just basically additional damage based on our ballistic skill bonus. So the more ballistic skill bonus we have, which is also buffed by the officer, the higher the damage we deal. Then we pick up heightened concentration. So whenever we crit, we increase our armor penetration. We get wild hunt. We never use this one. Then we get one AP, ballistic skill, and better to die for the emperor. So if we drop below 40% wounds, we get additional characteristics and resolve. So we deal a little bit more damage. Then we pick ballistic skill, hunter's ambush. If we perform a single shot, which we do all the time, on immobilized or stunned target, which we can achieve through a variety of means, like for example, the AOE cone of the navigator, this attack refunds its cost and doesn't count to the attack limit. So we can attack multiple times per round. Then we pick up claim the bounty, deals a little bit additional damage. If we finish a target that's marked as prey, we get additional AP. Then we pick up expert finesse. So if we attack a target that's at difficulty four or higher, we reload our weapon, we attack the closest enemy in line of sight, over penetrate them, and we deal less damage with this shot. However, it's a free attack and we reload our weapon. Then we pick up perception, characteristic agility, claim and maim. So if we kill a target with our claim and maim, so the bonus attack, the next attack we score is a critical hit. Then we pick up awareness, perception, wild hunt, the upgrade number three. So now we want to use the wild hunt ability. On a single target, this will deal 300% more damage. It's exceptionally strong now, but only after you acquire this buff. For the next talent, we actually don't want to buff our own damage, but the damage and the crit chance of our party. So critical chain is going to be our target here. Then we pick up awareness, logic, tech use, whatever. Next characteristic is going to be perception. We want to pick up the less weapon expert now. This will make our laser weapon even more accurate. Next, we want to pick up ensnare prey. This will make it possible to immobilize targets and trigger our free attacks. Then we pick up gruesome kill to deep of enemies when we hit them. For the characteristic, pick up agility or intelligence. Available skills, same as before. Awareness, logic, tech use. For the talent, withdraw. If a target gets to us, we can get out of melee range without triggering an attack of opportunity and we can move away afterwards. For the next talent, we want to pick up No No Heresy. This one stacks with other No No Heresy traits, so we get additional crit chance and armor penetration for the Xenos and demonic creatures. We are not the primary target for Log Xenos or Log Warp, so we don't need those stats. And for the Wild Hunt upgrade, we want to pick up the first upgrade or the second upgrade, depending on what you want. I personally found that the prey upgrade, the second upgrade is better because you use up your prey and you can use them afterwards. So it's kind of useless if the prey suffers this bonus because we cannot market prey. With this one, we restore the prey. So that's much better. And again, for the exemplar, there's a ton of additional abilities, like for example, pinpoint accuracy, deadly aim, or masterful precision. Now let's have a look at the equipment. I'm currently using the analyst helmet. So if we kill a target that has an exploit and an exploit is generated immediately on a nearby target, we want to use light armor with the highest armor value possible. This one also gives us additional dot chance versus human enemies and agility, which boosts our dot chance. The target designator is really, really good. If we hit an enemy with a dead eye shot, we reduce their deflection by one and it applies 
one exploit until the end of combat. However, that eye shot costs two AP, so we want to use this exclusively on high deflection targets to shred the deflection of them. Sniper Goon is also using the hypnotizing pendant. So if we hit a target with a single shot ability, the target is slowed for the next turn. We pick up the metronome. If we don't move, which we do not on the sniper, we get plus 10 to characteristics. So ballistic skill, agility, perception, intelligence. We use the sniper gloves for crit boost and the damage boost. We're going to use the chameleon cloak to give us 10% additional dot chance. For the boots, we are using the adrenaline war boots for additional 20% dot chance if we start the turn. And for the weapons, I'm going to use the long glass. This one is obtained in the zone where you find Cassia. So extremely early in the game. And it's one of the best sniper rifles until end of Act 2. And you will find at the end of Act 1, the rebel sniper rifle, which is a high damage physical sniper rifle has less range, less ammo, less hit chance, but more armor penetration. So if you're standing closer to an enemy and you are sure the shot is going to hit, use this one to get the benefits of damage. And physical weapons, solid weapons, also have a high over penetration chance. So you can hit targets behind the target much easier with this one. Other substitutes are the marksman rifle or the regular sniper rifle, all of which can be found in Act 1. And the better sniper rifles you will find through reputation. So look at the high reputation rewards from vendors and pick your weapon according to this. Now, this sums up the build guide. If you found this one helpful, please leave a like. If you have any questions or remarks, comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join the channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin. And if you like the thumbnail, those are usually AI art, which I upload on my Patreon. So, see you next time and bye.